We are now going to talk about section 80A to section 80L. These are what we basically call now the general anti-avoidance rule of the act. Now before I continue here, one big comment I need to make is please check your SACA ITC examinal pronouncements for what parts of this will be excluded. There are a lot of exclusions from this, so only study the necessary parts. This section can be quite complicated, but uh, the, all of the complicated stuff has been left out. So please just make sure that you pay attention to that. Now, what this section does is this section contains the general principles that you can apply in all situations to check if there's an anti-avoidance um, element to it. And if there's an anti-avoidance section, so basically what I'm trying to say here is if there's an anti-avoidance section, this section can be applied. So the idea here is that if there's a, any arrangement that you make, any transactional arrangement that you enter into, if, the, if it is found that it resulted in a tax benefit, then the commissioner has the ability to look at this and ask if it's made for the purposes of tax avoidance only. And if so, then the, ta the commissioner can ignore that transaction or restate in such a way that addresses the, anti the avoidance issue. Now, this section is quite simple if you follow a systematic approach to it. You can't just jump all over the place with this. So this is how we're going to follow it. And you, you'll always build it up like this. So the first thing you'll see is we're going to look at an arrangement. What is an arrangement? Now in simple terms, an arrangement is basically anything. Any transaction, any agreement um, that you make between people is an arrangement. So in other words, there must be something happening between two people. And so when you see the plus, pay attention to it. Plus, there's a, if there's a tax benefit and that is the sole or main purpose is to have a tax benefit. So, if there's an arrangement and the sole or main reason is to have a tax benefit, then that is called an avoidance arrangement. So that's the term. So in other words, if you go and look at section 80L in a second, these are all the definitions. Right, so let's quickly look at it so long. So an avoidance arrangement is any arrangement, see there's a definition for arrangement, that results in a tax benefit. So an avoidance arrangement is an arrangement with a tax benefit. That's what it shows you. An avoidance arrangement is an arrangement with a tax benefit. Okay, what is an arrangement? It's any transaction or agreement. Okay, then you'll see whatever this transaction is, does it have to do with business? So is it a business transaction? Or is it not a business transaction? Now, for example, if a father makes a donation to a trust, that's not a business transaction. Right. And there are also rules that apply to any context. So in other words, Section 80A applies for businesses. Section 80A-B applies if it's not businesses. And Section 80A-C applies to both business and not businesses, so in all contexts. Right, so then, if it is found that there, the bona fide, there's no bona fide re business purpose for the arrangement, or that it creates abnormal rights and obligations, then it is called an impermissible avoidance arrangement. So an impermissible avoidance arrangement is discussed in section 80A. Tax, the word tax, includes any tax, levy or duty. Very important, I want you to understand there, that will include things like import duties, VAT, donations tax, dividends tax, transfer fees, estate duty, stamp duty, anything is included in tax. So any tax saving. Now, section 80A is the section that they tell us to look at for what the impermissible avoidance arrangement is. So everything that you see here, this whole everything here, see it ends up with section 80A, impermissible avoidance arrangement. So I'm just showing you where you can find this now in the Act. So it says, an avoidance arrangement is an impermissible avoidance arrangement if. So what is an avoidance arrangement first? An avoidance arrangement is an arrangement where you save tax. Now before I continue with anything there, I want you to see here quickly, section 80G says, 
An avoidance arrangement is presumed to have been entered into or carried out for the sole or main purpose of obtaining a tax benefit unless and until the party obtaining the tax benefit proves that reasonably considered in light of the relevant facts and circumstances obtaining a benefit was not the sole or main purpose. So, what does this mean? It means, I've said to you already, an avoidance arrangement is an arrangement, so let me actually clean up here, an avoidance arrangement is an arrangement where there's a tax benefit and that is the sole or main purpose. Section 80G says, SARS may assume that the sole or main reason is to have a tax benefit. They don't have to prove it. They can assume it. That's what Section 80G says. So it means they've already ticked this box. And if there's an arrangement, they've already ticked this box. So SARS can assume this. You have to prove that the sole or main purpose is not to have a tax benefit. Okay, so now, take you back to Section 80A. So an avoidance arrangement is an impermissible avoidance arrangement if its sole or main purpose was to obtain a tax benefit. And I'm going to write here, section, sorry, section, <laughs> can't write an 8 there, section 80G, SARS may assume this until the taxpayer proves otherwise. Right, so SARS can assume that. So, an avoidance arrangement, sorry, an avoidance arrangement is again what, guys? An arrangement where there is a, oh, so let me remind you, an avoidance arrangement is an arrangement that has a tax benefit. So, if there's an arrangement that has a tax benefit, it will be an impermissible avoidance arrangement. Impermissible means not permitted, not allowed. If its sole main reason is to obtain a tax benefit, and here we go, in the context of business, in a context other than business, and in any context. Remember that's what I said to you guys? Business, not business, any context. Right. So if it's in the context of business, it was entered into or carried out in a mean which is not normally employed for bona fide business purposes. The next part over there, guys, non your syllabus. Okay? That, the idea of commercial substance, not in your syllabus. B, if it's in a context other than business, it was carried out by means which would not be for bona fide business purposes. So whether it's in the context of business or in any other context, if it's not, bona fide bis, uh, not for a bona fide purpose, other than obtaining a tax benefit, it's an issue. And if in any context, it has created rights or obligations that would not normally create, be created between persons. Right, and the next part again there is excluded. Okay, so understand now what it means. So if we are looking at a business transaction, you'll, you'll include section 80A A and C. So you'll talk about, is, there, is it for bona fide business purposes? And does it create any rights or obligations? If it is not a, a business transaction, so for example, a father with an aid to a trust for his children, then you'll discuss B and C. So you'll say, is this still for a bona fide purpose? Or has it created rights or obligations? Now, just to give you a quick, idea, a quick example here. Mr. X earns a salary of 5 million rands. He is thus in the 45% tax bracket. So highest tax bracket. He owns a block of flats that have rental income of 200,000 rands per year. Mr. X donates it to a trust and states 
that the rental income vests in his three-year-old child. Let's just take that up to there. Right, so, is there an avoidance arrangement? Now, an avoidance arrangement is what? It is an arrangement that has a tax benefit. Now, Mr. X pays tax at 45% on his because he has a salary of 5 million. So, if he donates this income to the trust, right, if he donates it to the trust and it's still within his family, is there a tax saving? Yes, there is. Because instead of paying tax at 45%, his child will pay tax at, well, 18 or whatever the lower tax rates are, but lower than 45. So there is a tax benefit. So there's an arrangement and there's a tax benefit. SARS may assume, per Section 80G, that the sole or main purpose is to obtain that tax benefit. So, so far they can go. There is an avoidance arrangement and the sole or main purpose is to obtain tax benefit. Now we say, it's not in a context other than business. Now you have to ask yourself, was this entered into for a bona fide purpose other than obtaining a tax benefit? And does it create rights or obligations that would not normally be created? Now in this case, there's not really rights or obligations that would not normally be there. You can maybe ask about the bona fide purpose here. Mr. Um, but he can maybe argue and say that he wa he's trying to make sure that the flat are looked after for if he dies, then at least it's in the in the trust, which is valid. But what I'm trying to show you is, I try, you go through that process there. If he can't prove that, if he can't prove that the sole main reason is not to avoid tax, then this will not be allowed, and he will still be treated on it. Now we know already we have sections in the Act, like Section 73, that obviously also specifically counters that. But you can see why. It's to stop tax, tax from being avoided. And I'm trying to show you here, that we have all of these different sections that try and pick each other up and cover everything. Okay, so guys, what happens if Section 80A applies? Section 80B tells us that. It says the Commissioner may determine the tax consequences of any impermissible avoidance arrangements. Remember, impermissible avoidance arrangement is that we just studied. It's where there's uh, an arrangement with a tax benefit, the sole or main reason is the tax benefit, which SARS can assume until you prove otherwise, and it creates either bona fide, something that's not bona fide or abnormal rights obligations. It's easy as that. Can you see? What can SARS do? They can disregard any steps or combine it or recharacterize it. They can disregard any party to it. They can deem persons who are connected persons to be one and the same person. They can reallocate it. They can recharacterize it. So what I'm trying to show you is SARS can basically take that whole transaction and say, no, we disagree, this is what it would be like in the market, and they can just treat it as if that is what happened. In a question, they would probably explain this to you, you would not come up with this. So here's how you would approach this as a question. You will first discuss if there's an arrangement. So what is an arrangement, guys? It's any transaction, any agreement. It's anything, basically. This will mostly be the case. Then you need to discuss if there's a tax benefit. So... What is the tax before, or what should the tax be, and what is the tax? Right? You can then already indicate that per Section 80G, SARS can assume that the sole main reason is to obtain a tax benefit, which is a problem. Right? And you must indi and you can write, indicate that the taxpayer has proved otherwise. You have to explain this. Then indicate if it's business, not business, discuss that, and in all situations also discuss Section 80C and then conclude. Now guys, the nature of these questions, although they're quite complicated as I can ask you, because it's hard sometimes to see these hidden things. But as long as you go through the process here and just write down, because I'll give you all the information required, you should definitely pass that question.